Live from Las Vegas, it's The Q. Covering EMC World 2016. Brought to you by EMC. Now your host, Dave Vellante. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is EMC World 2016. This is The Cube. This is our seventh year at EMC World. It all started in Boston with lobster and chowder and the socks, and now we're out here in beautiful, uh, sunny Las Vegas. I'm here with Scott Andrus, the Regional Vice President for Channels and Alliances at Hortonworks, and Keith Mante, the CTO of Analytics at EMC's Isilon division. Gentlemen, Welcome to theCUBE, let's talk big data. Let's Great. talk, thank you. So, yeah, we were talking off camera, Scott and I was saying we were just at Hadoop Summit in Dublin. Great show, a lot of, lot of buzz coming off that, so Hortonworks, things are smoking. Yep, things continue along um, at a really fast pace. The partnership that we have with EMC is really starting to flourish. Um, if you look back when we started the partnership, it's about two years ago now, in March of 2015, we were officially certified as a joint solution of Isilon and, and Hortonworks data platform. Fast forward to September 2015, we're selected as part of EMC Select. So now we really start getting the ground game going from a sales perspective. And we're starting to see a lot of traction across the board from a customer standpoint uh, uh, perspective. So Keith, EMC's had a long history now in, in big data. When the, when the whole Hadoop meme sort of hit, 2009, 2010, it really started hitting the radar, and then you guys made an acquisition of Green Plum, mm -hmm. and then of course Isilon mm -hmm. you know, came in after that, and that yep. was going to wheelhouse mm -hmm. storage infrastructure, big data, mm -hmm. boom. Um, and so you've really evolved and become mm -hmm. a major player. And the other thing is, the conventional wisdom back then was, oh, EMC, NetApp, whomever, pick your storage vendor, big trouble, nobody's going to use that stuff for Hadoop and big data and then bang, hits the enterprise. Well, what about governance? What about security? What about compliance? So that's been a real tailwind for you guys. You talk governance, regulatory compliance. I also say operations and SLA. People are starting to build massive complexes. They want to make sure that they stay up. They want to make sure that you know, when they put millions of dollars of investment of their business on a Hadoop platform, they're able to run it. They can get the staff to support it, they can be able to scale it, they can handle the availability they need. And to your point, that is really where we're seeing a continued partnership with Hortonworks as driving the Hortonworks and Iceland value proposition for large organizations as they continue to grow their Hadoop platform. So let's talk a little bit about that partnership. I've personally talked to Sean Conley many times about uh, Hortonworks' philosophy on partnering, and I think EMC, you know, much, much bigger company, but the but Sean has always underscored the depth of the partnerships that you're looking for. It's not just what we sometimes call a Barney deal, you know, I love you, you love me, let's do a press release and we move on. It's much, much deeper than that. Can you describe in a little yeah, more depth? Yeah, absolutely. So when we partner with a strategic partner, we go deep, right? From engineering to product management, so that one, we've got the proper integration day one, but we also have the roadmap in place in terms of where we're going. We were talking this about this a little bit earlier. We've seen it where we've sort of gone through the evolution of Hadoop within our customer base. And now we're going back through that evolution with a combination of EMC, Isilon, and Hortonworks data platform where customers are saying, I did the POC and then I did the renovate in, in terms of ETL offload, but now I'm really looking to scale out and do the interesting innovation use cases. And I want the security, I want the operations, I want the management, I want the governance. And together, it's incumbent upon both organizations to drive that into the market. In turn, we need a real deep engineering partnership. So, from EMC's perspective, again, you guys really hopped onto this mm -hmm. trend and said, no, we're not going to shy away from, mm -hmm. from big data. We're going to go all in, we're going to develop solutions. How do you guys collaborate from, a, from both an engineering and a go-to-market standpoint to make that happen? A lot of it, you have to watch where the industry's going. What are the hot trends? I mean, we see trends here about IoT. We see trends here about video surveillance. We see trends talking about you know, data offload. And as we watch where the trends are going, then we look at, all right, what are the workflows that we need? What are the tools that we need to enable those? And you know, first thing is you need to have a joint engineering. How does the data get into the platform? So platform, you know, so their NiFi investment, which was on Yara, now relabeled as Hortonworks Dataflow, makes a great way to get data inside of 
the ice on. You then also look at, you know, what are the use cases and what are the tools you're going to put on top of the environment. You know, so it, as we spend a lot of time, we start with the end user in mind and then work back to what are the tools, what are the joint engineering, how do we build together the partnership that we know where the client wants to be. Because it doesn't really help if you go to where the people are today. It really matters how do you go to where they're going to want to be in a year or two or three because it, it, it can't just be about where the world is today. It's moving far too fast to be able to do that. So Scott, talk about that NIFI uh, investment that you guys made. You're a public yep. company now, so you've been more acquisitive. Uh, yep. Talk about the importance of NIFI and, and what the angle is with EMC. Yeah, so it's incredibly important for us as an organization, right? Because what it does is, it brings us the notion of a connected data platform. So the combination of HortonWorks data platform, data at rest, and HortonWorks data flow, which is essentially a NIFI technology for data in motion. Right, and what it enables us to do is to be able to deliver data both securely, but also with lineage from a governance perspective. So we can ensure you that the data that you selected to bring in is actually the data you wanted. Um, and we're seeing this play across with EMC right now. I think Mike Bishop from Prescient was on earlier. Yeah. And he was talking about leveraging HortonWorks data flow with the HortonWorks data platform on top of Isilon. So we're seeing it out in the market right that now. That was an interesting use case. Absolutely, mm -hmm. risk mitigation, was, yep. Uh, so, okay, so Keith, you know, in the early days, again, to do batch platform, mm -hmm. Yarn comes along, allows mm -hmm. us to negotiate more resources, do more things at once, mm -hmm. and now you, know, you got Spark coming in, other mm -hmm. in-memory technologies, real-time streaming. How is, is big data evolving and what kind of efforts are you guys doing together to accelerate that? As you said, at Batch, is, is, that's the classic use case. It's been around since you know, 2009. Last year, what we've seen is just a complete uptake to you know, streaming and what I'll call the hybrid architecture, which is using a lot of your Batch stores to calculate amount of data that then you can then in real time say, all right, either have a problem or not. Uh, we're starting to see that in various things like cybersecurity, or the press and edge scenario, where they're starting to figure out, are we looking at someone's life in danger because you know, there's a, a volatile situation where a traveler is. And so, you know, where we're seeing the investment is going closer to real time. You still need all the data that you have. The data may be cold, that may be you know, a month's worth of data, a year's worth of data, or it may be 15 minutes. But you need to aggregate that up and then you need just a, a minuscule amount for that real time. But that's what we're starting to see is how do we take all that together to make meaningful, real time, at that exact moment, decisions. And that's really where we're seeing the world moving to now. It's off a of batch to you know, instantaneous. But instantaneous means lots of compute in order to get there. So let's map that into what some of the things that customers have been doing over the last several years. So you guys like to talk about data lakes. My, mm -hmm. my business partner, John Ferry, hates data lakes, he <laughs> likes data oceans, whatever. We have to have that argument. But So the concept of data lake largely was about you know, extending, maybe even reducing the cost of the traditional data warehouse. Mm -hmm. Not maybe, clearly. Mm -hmm. We often joke though. ROI was you know, reduction on investment. <laughs> you know? so mm -hmm. it, it cut cost and it allowed you to put a lot, store a lot more data. Okay, well that was good. And that's still growing, mm -hmm. but you can see that as not being the most exciting part mm -hmm. of the future. We've talked about IoT, mm -hmm. data in motion, more real time. So talk about how some of the applications are, are evolving. Yeah, I think what we, what we originally saw was people building sort of single purpose built applications on top of the cluster. Uh -huh. And then it moved more towards this notion of a data lake where with Yarn you're now able to run best of breed, whether it's from the Hadoop ecosystem or commercial software on top of that data lake. Uh -huh. I think that trend continues, uh -huh. um, but I think we also see purpose built clusters being maintained for very specific workloads. Right, where it's how do I run best of breed software on top of this specific cluster to deliver the performance or outcomes that I need. Okay, and, and how does EMC approach, so for example, I mean, you get Pivotal, mm -hmm. right? You guys are now sort of interesting bedfellows, Pivotal and, and yep, Hortonworks, yep. sort of, you know, ODPI, and mm -hmm. so that's all cleared up. Mm -hmm. How do the sort of, you know, your relationship with Hortonworks, the Pivotal folks, Hortonworks, how are you guys all working together now? Can you sort of 
help us squint through that. Well, and I think ODPI, now that you mentioned, it, brings a whole lot of value. And so, you know, one of the things I used to get a lot of questions from clients about were the pace of change within Hadoop was faster than what most companies could handle. Now with the ODPI release, Hortonworks 2.4, you're now going to see more of an annual release of Hadoop. And then the supplemental or the frothy components like your Spark, your Kafka, will change more often. And that allows clients to stabilize a little more. But it also allows us to build a better runway so that we know where the release is going to be. We will be able to go to market sooner with Hortonworks to have clarity, to have certification right after it goes to market. We will be able to put all of the pivotal components on top of it day one, and so the goal there is, you know, with a lot of the ecosystem as chassis was changing, it was sort of a catch-up game. And so now as it becomes a little more synchronized, there's less of a catch-up game, and who wins is the client when day one they can install everything and it works. Versus having to wait till all the components got there, and you know, and that was sort of the early days of Hadoop where, you know, you, you sort of had to hope that you had the right configuration to make sure it worked. Now it's very precise, you can install it, you know it will work with everything you have. And that goes to the partnership that we have and sort of, you know, how do we make it easier for the client. How about the ecosystem, Scott? Let's talk about that a little bit. Doug Cutting uh, made the statement, uh, I think it was on the Cube or somewhere, but that basically every time a new project comes out, you know, they got to go support it, you know, they put engineering resources on it. Same's true for Hortonworks, your business model is different because you're essentially selling a subscription model, right? Um, but the ecosystem is very complex. Yep. Uh, it's a complicated situation for a lot of cu customers. What do you make of that? Uh, it's not getting simpler. It just seems to be growing and growing. Can we expect that to continue? And how do you deal with all that complexity? Yeah, I mean, I think you see it continue. Um, certainly when we put out our first release of the Hortonworks data platform, it was much smaller in terms of what it is today, right? And I think, I think you'll continue to see that evolve. Um, and the other piece of it is supporting the ecosystem, right? Hadoop is clearly a platform, and it's incumbent upon us to make sure that all those solutions work optimally on top of the platform, right? Because that's what customers are driving for. They, they want to be able to run the right solution for the right workload. Right, so you guys, a lot of committers to the open source world. Yeah. EMC's relatively new to open source. I remember when John Rose came on mm -hmm. as, uh, you know, the because the overall CTO mm -hmm. at EMC, we went in, did a little analyst talk, and he asked me, you know, what do you think? And what, what, what advice do you give us? And I said, open source, you guys are like way behind on open source. He said, you know, you're right, but that's going to change. It already is changing, you mm -hmm. just don't see it yet. Now, the fact was, at the time, EMC was a consumer mm -hmm. of, of open source, mm -hmm. and then, a kind of, of course, with Pivotal and, mm -hmm. and others, but we'll, give us the update on mm -hmm. sort of your role mm -hmm. in the ecosystem, as opposed to just a, you know, purveyor of you know, storage solutions. And I think it's very telling. We have an entire booth dedicated to what's called EMC Code, which is EMC's open source portfolio. Mm -hmm. Be it our, you know, scale out block, which is open source scale I.O. We now have a Isilon, free and frictionless software defined Isilon, which is scale out file. We also have the ECS, which is scale out object. So we continue to contribute. If you look at those, ECS and uh, Isilon are within the last year. So, you know, the pace continues, we continue to push more software to find. Doesn't mean we're not going to continue to sell the hardware to find it, but what we're seeing is the world's changing. Open source is there, it's heat, you know, and EMC is embracing it. Can you guys give us some visibility, you know, show a little leg on what you're working on now together? What, uh, what's the roadmap look like? What kind of guidance can you give us? I would say uh, one of the things I know we're seeing is watch where NiFi, Atlas, HDP, and Isilon go with some of the use cases. And when I say that, think scale. So today, if you think Hadoop, you know, if you hear a petabyte or two, you think that's huge. I think that is about to change at, at a radical pace. I, I would agree. I think the focus is going to be around IoT and how do we integrate Hortonworks data flow and, and what does that look like moving forward. There's been a lot of interesting discussion going on. It was early days, obviously. You know, everybody wants to instrument, you know, the windmill, so to speak. But there's connectivity issues that people are resolving, and then there's obviously you know data movement. That's going to be in a really interesting explosion of innovation, and you guys are at the heart of it. Well, listen, thanks very much for for coming to the cube. Congratulations on the. The, the, 
medium term in this in 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 this world of dog years, you guys have been partners for a long, long yeah. time. So uh, wishing you the best for many dog years forward. So thanks again. Great, thanks for Thank having you. us. All right, keep it right there, everybody. This is the Cuber live from EMC World 2016 in Vegas. We'll be right back. Looking back at the at the history of this.